it once or do it twice, let's do it again. <laughs> Hey Jenny, what's cooking? It's so cold out, Jonathan. I can hardly stand it. I know, it's just freezing and it's it's nasty and it's miserable and I need something to uh, to set my soul right. And you know what'll do that? What will do that, Jenny? Carbs. carbs. Nothing will do but carbs. Mm. So Carbohydrates, on, that's absolutely. right. Absolutely, and on what's cooking now this week, we've got a special guest, Jennifer Weaver, to show us some cool stuff. So we're gonna be we're gonna be doing carbohydrates on what's cooking now, coming to you from the Heinemann Settlement School, uh, where food is love and love is delicious and uh, we're doing carbs to keep you warm in the winter uh, so if you're one of those uh, keto um, paleo tuna. low carb uh, nano actually stay tuned i do have a little meat surprise at the end of the show. yeah there, there'll be me some meat somewhere but for the most part this is uh this is probably not the show for you we'll do one for you yeah. later on don't yeah, don't worry about it absolutely. we'll do one we'll do one that works for you but uh, you know it's just I, I i love carbs all the time mm. i mean let's face it like for me i can do without sweets, I can do without a lot of stuff, but give me salty, crunchy carbs mm -hmm. or cheesy, yummy carbs. And it's just really, there's a reason that it's, carbs it's are comfort it, food. It's really where it just, it just works, it just works. Yeah. And uh, so what are you doing? Well, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make pierogi. <coughs> and pierogi are um, carbs wrapped in carbs. So it doesn't get much better than that. And I was first yeah. introduced to, to pierogies. Um, when I would go and visit my um, husband's family up in Chicago, and we would go to these fish fries, and his mother, um, Barb, her family is Polish, and so they had a long tradition of, of pierogies in their family. Beautifully, his father was Mexican, so we would have tamales and pierogies mm. at Christmas, and it was pretty awesome. And so I've been playing around with making them. As always, when I make something that's a dish from another culture, I make no claims towards <coughs> any sort of authenticity or any sort of... Um, genuineness I guess but um, it's, yeah. it's my riff my try on it so um, it's uh, I've made uh, pierogies for years and years and years now and I play around with different recipes and some of the recipes that I have have sour cream in them but the other day the New York Times and I just need to look at this to read this the New York Times um, posted a um, recipe for pierogi and it talked about how they were let me pull this up here because this made me uh, pierogi are always on the menu at milk bars historic Polish restaurants that were once socialist canteens. And I find that in the cold winter, not only do I want carbs, but damn it, I want a socialist canteen. Can we make that happen? Yeah, really, a socialist like milk bar. One. I'm all about it. I'm, I am too, a socialist milk bar. So um, I tried this recipe, which was a little different from the ones I had usually made. So, But I really think you can Google a recipe for pierogi dough. I would love to hear if pierogies are a culture in your family and something that you've grown up making or eating. I'd love to hear how you make your dough. So pop into the chat and tell us how you make your dough. This dough doesn't have sour cream in it, like some of the other ones I have. And what was different with this dough from some other doughs I've done is that you, you take, so this is just all purpose flour um, with a little bit of salt in it. And then I have melted a half a cup of water and three tablespoons of butter and that gets poured on here. And it's gonna look like a crumbly shaggy mess and you're not gonna believe that it's gonna come together, but it does. Once you've mixed that a little bit, you beat an egg, which I have here in a jar a happy hen's egg shout out to andy um, um and um um Lindsay. Lindsay, sorry <laughs> Lindsay, i love you you know you're the only one for me um 
So I've got an egg to put in here, mm -hmm. and I think ha this is a good thing to make. Any kind of pasta, I feel like, is really good when you have good fresh yeah. eggs, any kind of dough. So I want to do this because I want you to see how shaggy this looks, and because you may, if you're not accustomed to making something like this, then it may seem kind of like it's not going to work to you. But I'm just mixing this together, and it is going to look super shaggy and not like something that you could roll out and make beautiful little pockets of dough. And so can you see that? Put your hands on your computer screen to feel this. It's pretty dry. Mm -hmm. pretty, but I'm just sort of working it together and sort of pressing the pieces that have moisture into the pieces that don't. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to actually shift and use my fingers because that's a lot more efficient. Although I am going to use, when I get ready to put the egg in, I am going to use the spoon again. Then I'm just going to sort of make a well here. I'm going to crack my egg into the middle. And I'm going to kind of stir it around a little bit here so it sort of mixes a little bit. And then again, I'm just going to pull the dough off of this spoon and just use my fingers to mix this. And it's going to come together, even if it seems like it won't. And I'm going to knead this for about five minutes until it becomes silky and smooth. So you guys can see this, right? And you, that's just the butter you've added. You've not added that's, any water. I, there's water and butter. There's yeah, so there's, there was a half butter. cup of water, half three of water, tablespoons, of, three butter, tablespoons butter, of butter, two cups of flour, a teaspoon of salt, and an egg. That's so what if we're talking about a baker's percentage, just a fairly dry dough. It's a fairly dry dough. Um, like I said, other recipes I've used have sour cream, which adds mm. some moisture. But and this is the first time I've used this recipe. Um, I think I've used recipes that have some oil in them before. Mm -hmm. And I will say that I, I made some of these last night, and the dough was so nice to handle and just really um, beautiful. And so I really, really like it. So I'm gonna just keep kneading this. And Jonathan, if you tell, wanna tell us what you're making, we've got another kind of dough over here. And well, I'll I be thought, over here kneading this. Well, I thought uh, if, you know, we're talking about what are the two most carby things I can think of? And I thought bread and potatoes um, are, are my two favorite carbs. So I think, so I thought back to uh, a trip that I took in 2000, one to Italy. I went to remember uh, when we could travel. Remember, remember yeah, remember when, when traveling, go when, when going places was a thing. But I went to um, went to Italy, and and on every uh, just about every street in Rome or in Florence, uh, there's what's called a pizza al forno shop, and and these are um, pizza, pizza what? Pizza al forno. Oh, I thought you said pizza al forno, and that would be something. That would there's probably there. one of those too in uh, in many uh, on many streets in in Rome, but in uh, but there are pizza al forno, which means pizza from the oven. And it's, uh, these are, are, a lot of times they'll refer to them as daytime pizza places, which I'll, I'll talk about. But, um, but these are places where they have lots of pizzas in, the, in a case, and you buy them by, the, uh, by weight. You buy them by the, uh, the etto, as they call it. They're big square cut uh, pizzas that are baked in pans like this. So this is not like the pizza that you put on a peel and you put in the, on the, you know, directly in the brick oven. And the difference between this kind of pizza and, uh, and I guess why this would be daytime pizza is that um, these are cooked in electric ovens. And uh, the, the wood-fired ovens that you think about when you think about real you know, Italian pizza, uh, there was a rule in Rome in particular that you couldn't uh, start your wood-fired oven until 6 p.m. Really? I don't know why. That was just one of those, one of those, crazy, uh, one of those crazy things. But uh, so this is a very different kind of uh, a very different kind of pizza. That dough looks beautiful. Like I'm so, sort of feeling it, and it's really nice. I'm not going to get too much into the weeds here about pizza pizza dough. You can look online, and there are lots of good pizza dough recipes, and you know they're all going to work pretty well. I will say that if you can find one that is an overnight dough, mm -hmm. that that's a good thing. Yeah, people um, have been raving about that, and I I I made pizza dough and left it in the oven overnight just kind of by accident mm -hmm. but you know one of the best pizza doughs i can remember ever making and you guys were there this was years and years ago at trisha watts birthday party and oh, we were at that yeah. camp um that camp in red river gorge like a, it was a yeah. like an old church mm -hmm. camp and we made pizza and the pizza was all great and it was a lot of fun but there was dough left over and i remember the next morning we got up and i'd left a bowl out and it just kind of overproof mm -hmm. super puffy but I remember Carson took it, my son took it, and he put like an entire Hershey's bar in it <laughs> and wrapped it up and baked it. Mm -hmm. It was fabulous. So I do remember pizza this. Pizza dough is incredibly forgiving, and it's incredibly um, 
really versatile. Yeah. You know, you can do you can a lot with sweet it. Sweet with it, you can stay savory. You can do a lot with it. I love making breakfast pizzas. You know, having some breakfast, having some leftover, and then you. Uh, uh, one place that I kind of one, one uh, pizza that I really love is uh, that I you can probably still get at the garage in Louisville uh, is just has really thin sliced ham and then eggs that are put on the pizza raw oh, um, that are cooked like after it's cooked like that are, well they're put on and then cooked it's, it's right as it just goes right in. as it goes in so it stays sort of runny but I'm not going to get too much into the weeds yolk. of that pizza but I'm just going to I'm just pressing this out into these pans these are just half half uh, these are quarter sheet pans um so you're doing kind of small I feel ones like i need some pans that size i don't have any pans that size we didn't for a long time and now that i've got I mean, them i really like them us, you know? yeah so i'm just sort of pressing this out and uh it's going to be a little bit uneven and that's fine this is the word you're looking for is rustic yes, um this absolutely. is this is rustic um pizza rustica if you want that so that's really nice and you just had a little olive oil so i just got got some in. olive oil in here we're not going to skimp on the olive oil with this recipe because this is a very very simple pizza that we're making so that every uh so every ingredient matters and you don't want to skimp on any one of them so uh so i'm just going to press that out and uh of course you can see all that spring in the dough that's uh and of course this is gluten that gives you this uh that gives you that spring that pizza crust is sort of built around that that overnight dough uh, overnight rise lets you get a nice uh uh, gluten web in did this. You, is this overnight? Did you do this? This was an overnight. Yes, I did this one overnight. But you don't have to. You know what I'm fond of? I'm, I'll, I'll admit it. Um, I, I'm actually pretty fond of those uh, in the package that you uh, uh, you get in the, you get next to the spaghetti in the the the, the grocery chef store. Like yeah, I the chef from the 70s when I was, yeah. Well, see now, have you? I don't know if you've heard of the idea of pizza cognition theory. No, tell me. This is an idea in psychology yeah. that. Uh, that the pizza that you have first, the pizza that you, the first pizza you ever have, is sort of your idea of pizza in your head. That every pizza, you're gonna sort of in some way compare to that one. Um, so you know, depending on where That's you are, so I mean, interesting. you know, if you're somebody you know whose family orders a lot of Papa John's, that may be sort of the pizza for you. For me, it was, uh, it was those, uh, those, in the pan, it was the whole, the whole uh, package, the ones that came in the whole package with the little can of sauce and the. And the Cheese and the dust. cheese and the cheese dust and my mother could really uh, uh, gussy those up and make them pretty delicious. So uh, that is so the pizza cognition theory. Pe that's pizza really cognition theory. And it's really interesting if you know about Jonathan's other pizza theories, which I encourage you to ask him about sometime when we're not on the air. <laughs> and I'm interested in how those two theories kind of go together. You know what I mean? It's interesting. It's it is. Thought, I need yeah. to I need to sit with that a while and yeah, think about it. Yeah. So, uh, uh, but speaking of gluten, don't yeah. you feel sorry for people who like? I do. Can't eat it. Or I really who, do. Who, you know, I really that, feel. I feel really sorry for people. I feel really. Who can't I mean, that's just un, really unfortunate. Who but can't, who don't eat carbs or who can't eat, um, who have celiac disease or whatever. I feel really sorry for them. But for people that don't eat gluten, you know, things aren't so bad. But uh, you know, and we can prove that with our special guest, our very first guest on this. Jennifer Weaver. Ah! Jennifer Weaver. Hey. Yay! It's good to be here. You know, and gluten-free baking has come a long ways. You can make some really tasty things. Um, and I kind of got into gluten-free baking accidentally um, when I was baking at the farmer's market and I had some customers who wanted gluten-free products. So I started experimenting. I went to the internet. I found a lot of conflicting information. And then I started experimenting and figuring out what would work for me. And this yeah, past Christmas, some, I took uh, a lemon cookie recipe I had gotten several years ago off of Food Network, it was a Giada recipe, and converted it to a gluten-free recipe so that um, some of my friends who mm. are gluten sensitive or gluten intolerant could have a nice cookie. And it's a lemon cookie. I decided to use this because there's some ricotta cheese and there's lemon and there's a bunch of stuff that goes into it. Um, so it's a pretty moist cookie. You start with some sugar and butter, and then you put in ricotta cheese and eggs and lemon zest and um, some lemon juice, and you mix that up till it's really fluffy. And then you put in your flour, and I like to use Bob's Red Mill flour, um, one to one, because it's just easy. There's lots of options you can make. You can make your own gluten-free flour. Mm -hmm. There are How do other. How you make your own gluten-free flour? Well, you Mixing go to the things. web. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and you mix in different type. You mix in some almond flour and some coconut flour and rice flour, and there's all sorts of different recipes. Wow. Um, 
but I like to make it simple, mm -hmm. and that I've had really like good luck with that. Let the, let let the scientists yeah. at Bob's Red Mill hand do the hard work for you. Exactly, exactly. So a couple of things I've learned is that um, I don't like that grainy mm -hmm. sort of thing that you get, texture that you get yeah. with uh, gluten-free. So mm -hmm. I've found that if you really beat it for a while mm -hmm. in the mixer, it helps. Um, and there's no gluten, so you don't have to worry about it toughening up the cookie or anything yeah. like that. Um, and then let it sit for a little bit, five, so ten that minutes. does make it like absorb the water? Is that I why think it, so. I think that's the science yeah. behind it. The, the, the rice, the... It just the, hydrates it, yeah. Yeah, and so you don't get that grainy feeling, um, grainy texture when you're eating it. And I should point out that I'm looking at the ingredients on this, uh, and this is not some Franken food. This is not no. some, you know, this is, uh, it's sweet rice flour, uh, brown rice flour, potato starch, whole grain sorghum flour, tapioca flour. The craziest thing in here is a little xanthan gum, just to yeah. keep so the So that's gluten free. That's not like some wheat that the gluten's been removed from. It's yeah, no, it's not, yeah, this is it's not some. Uh, yeah, this is no. not some crazy scientific thing. This is just a mix of flowers that have been used for you know ever mm -hmm. and, and gluten free ever. flowers can be expensive, right? They can, um, which is why some people make their own. Um, but um, you know, I like to find a deal on it and stock up. Sounds good. So, you know, sometimes they have this at United Grocery Outlet. Ooh, Just a little shout out. Do. We're pretty excited about little, our little preview of our next show. UGM the, uh, Challenge. United Grocery Outlet will be prominently featured in such a show. Sounds good. So you have so you're gonna have cookies for us in a little bit. I am. I'm gonna go back and do some baking magic and nice. I'll be out later with a sweet treat for y'all. Well thank you, Jennifer. You're welcome. You so, can buy many of Jennifer's uh, uh, treats during the, the farmers market season. Uh, she's going to have all sorts of deliciousness. So, so uh, Jonathan, so we'll I was there. kind of sad that we um, didn't get to, um, I don't know what's happening. I was kind of sad that we didn't get to do our last show because we were going to talk about inspirations that we gotten from traveling. Mm -hmm. So I know that we haven't traveled a lot, but what are some places that you've been and some things that you've eaten that have inspired you to cook some different stuff at home? Uh, well, in the last few weeks, uh, or in the last few months anyway, uh, of course, you know, there's not been that much travel, but we did get to New Orleans for... Uh, uh, for New Year's Eve, and that was, uh, um, that is always, uh, always big for me. And what I, you know, I usually, sometimes when we go down there, I try to pick one food and try to sort of focus on it and mm -hmm. make it, uh, and, and make it, uh, and try to find as many different variations on something as I can. And in that case, it was uh, uh, gumbo. I decided that I was going to go and find uh, a lot of different gumbos, and I found you know, just sort of looked around at some of the best places to get gumbo, you know, some sort of higher, higher end places and some of the, uh, even some of the, you know, holes in the wall. And uh, so I got kind of the full range of it and, uh, and discovered, decided what I like about it. So I've not done it yet, but I did get, you know, ingredients to sort of uh, come back and try to, and I've made gumbo before, but really to try to perfect my own. Right. I and, love about gumbo, and I didn't know this until I was probably in my 30s, that what thickens gumbo is either okra or filet powder mm -hmm. and I didn't know until I was in my 30s that filet powder is just powdered sassafras mm -hmm. leaves so we grow that yes. right here um, sadly sassafras trees are under attack from an invasive yep. pest but that's for probably another show another it kind is. of show so I have kneaded my dough and I just want to show you um, this now so this is the dough that I needed and you can see that it's come together and it's nice and smooth um, and it's pliable it's not sticky at all and I'm gonna sit this aside. I'm gonna either cover it with plastic or a damp towel and let it rest. Um, but I have some that I made last night that I've already rolled out. Um, and I have three different fillings for my pierogi. Like I said, carbs wrapped in carbs. That's gonna be my potato um, filling. So I've got um, potatoes with um, cheese. And I used, instead of a cheddar cheese or something, I used a farmer's cheese, like a, actually a Mexican crumbling cheese because I felt like that was probably closest to the kind yeah. of farmer's cheeses that you could get. So this is just potatoes. I just diced them up. It's like a russet potato. I just diced it up, um, boiled it until it was tender, mixed it with some onions, some sauteed onions, and some cheese. And then I have um, a sauerkraut, mm. and, and this has some carrots and some onions in it, a little caraway seed. Again, I do not pretend to any sort of authenticity, but I love mm. sauerkraut. Just, yeah, just smelling it is, is And wonderful. then I have also... I have a little mushroom filling mm. um, that I'm going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and start cutting out and forming my pierogies, mm -hmm. um, which is really pretty easy. And pierogies are super nice to make. They're pretty easy to make. Mm -hmm. They're fun to make with kids. They're fun to make with a group, mm -hmm. right? Because everybody you can, can do, kind of yeah, sit around. You can sort of um, like dumplings and a lot, of other, a lot of other um, mm -hmm. um, foods like that. And they freeze really beautifully. Mm -hmm. So once you make them, 
You can sort of set them aside and mm. freeze them and then cook them later. Um, and I'm no, I'm no snob. I like the frozen mm -hmm. pierogies that you can just get in the grocery store. They're one of my favorite quick You've rolled that out super treats. thin. I've rolled this out pretty thin. Um, you can see it's not super thin. Like it's not as you thin as say a ravioli would be. Mm -hmm. um, you can't quite see through it, but it's yeah. pretty thin. Yeah. And I like it not too thin because yeah. I'm here for the carbs. They're doughy. I'm yeah, here for the They should be a little doughy. They should be a little, little doughy. So I'm just going to... Um, put a little on this and then I'm just I have a I'm, I like also I like my pierogies fairly small mm -hmm. um, because I like two bite pierogies is what I like so I'm just going to sort of cut these out I will say if you're Cincinnati adjacent there is a uh, there's a wonderful window uh, there's a window in over the Rhine where you can get delicious pierogies I'm going to look up the name of the pierogi place um, in a minute but uh, uh, but yeah please uh, definitely hit them up so just doing this with a glass, no no special uh, super equipment. No, and you know, I it's I love the fact that really something wrapped in some kind of dough is mm. present in almost every it is. culture. And it I is. am here for all of them. Well, so I was talking about these pizza uh, pizza al forno shops and one one thing that um, that when we were when I was in one of those shops, I would see these pizzas with potatoes on them. Um, it was just pizza and potatoes. It wasn't it was just the pizza crust with potatoes on top. No sauce, no cheese, no anything. It was just uh, pizza con patat, they called it. And, uh, you know, I saw this in just about every shop that I went into. One day I had to try it and found it pretty compelling. So, you know, this sort of carb on carb, uh, sort of carb on carb action. So what I've done here <laughs> is I've got some, uh, some Yukon Gold Babushka pierogies. That's the, uh, the place in Cincinnati you should check out. Uh, what I've got is some uh, some Yukon Gold potatoes. Uh, these are actually just listed as golden potatoes. I don't know, maybe Yukon Gold is a, but they're uh, but I've used the golden kind, and that's because they're just a, they got a little bit more flavor. And again, this is one of those recipes where everything counts. Every every so that, little thing those counts. Those are raw. No, these these are raw. Um, and I'm slicing these. I've got I'm, I'm using a mandolin for this. This is a I love my This is a Japanese mandolin. I've used to get these because I want these super thin. I want these just about as thin as you can as they'll stay together. Um, you know, you, you want to be able to just about read through them. So I've, um, so I've done that, and then what I did is I, I got a whole bunch of these, and I soaked them in water overnight. Uh, now, overnight is not necessary. Uh, from what I've seen, you can probably do um, 20, 25 minutes, and, and it works, uh, works pretty well. But, but I've soaked these overnight, and that does a couple of things. One is that it, uh, it hydrates the potatoes a little bit so that they uh, so they're not going to burn. So you you've sliced them and then you soak. I've them. sliced them and then I've soaked them. I've soaked them in some salt water overnight uh, because that also seasons them. That gives me, gives us a nice uh, uh, a nice saltiness to these. So I'm just gonna gonna lay these on here, and I'm just sort of shingling them on. I'll, I'll pull this over here to make it a little easier to see. I'm just sort of shingling the potatoes onto the the pizza. And what you want to do is go a little bit thicker around the edges, just because. Uh, it's going to cook a little bit more out there. And I've, I've put a little olive oil down on the, the pizza crust first. So just sort of shingling these back and forth. And, and you know, when I was telling people about this, they're like, what kind of sauce is on this pizza? Well, no, no sauce. What kind of cheese is on it? Well, no cheese. It's, uh, <laughs> this is uh, pizza crust and potatoes. So, I mean, you could, you know, I guess calling this a pizza is probably a, a matter of, of definition. No, I, th uh, I think it's a pizza. I think it's a pizza. It's, it's a pizza this crust with stuff like on it. It's like the weeknight quickie of pizza. Yeah, it is. It is. And it's... It looks fabulous. So I'm just going to throw a few of these on here. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this with a little fresh rosemary. Yum. Just a touch. Rosemary and potatoes are really yeah, it, just, they're just a them, match made they? in heaven. And and to me, it's a it's a an herb that a lot of times it's best to use it by itself because it's so assertive mm -hmm. that it uh, it sort of takes over whatever you what do you give it to whatever. Yeah. So and then I'm going to top it with a little more olive oil. That looks beautiful. This is going to be good. That's it. That is it. I'm going to pop this in it. the. I've got the 500 degree oven, so that's a really hot oven. Um, and I'm going to pop it in. Okay, I think we're about ready to go to commercial break, so stick with us. We're here with What's Cooking Now at the Heinemann Settlement Show, where food is love and love tastes delicious. Be right back. Join the Pick and Bow family at Heinemann Settlement School. 
For the past five years, our Pick and Bow Mountain Music Education Program has provided free music lessons to students interested in learning how to play acoustic instruments. Any 4th through 12th grade students residing in Knott or Floyd County are invited to participate. Students have the option to learn guitar, fiddle, mandolin, banjo, mountain dulcimer, or ukulele. These virtual lessons take place on Zoom. If you have a device with a webcam and an internet connection, you're all set. A limited number of loaner instruments are available from the Hyman Settlement School. Go to hyman.org slash calendar to register. See you soon. The Red Spotted Newt is a locally owned independent bookstore located in downtown Hazard, Kentucky, specializing in Appalachian literature from authors such as Silas House, Gurney Norman, and Annette Clapsaddle, among many others. The Newt also offers a full collection of art and gifts, including little bubby child prints and these sweet cards inspired by the office. Check out their store located at 221 Memorial Drive in Hazard or shop online through bookshop.org. And be sure to follow them on Facebook and Instagram at the handle Red Spotted Newt. Welcome back to What's Cooking Now, where uh, food is love and love is delicious, where we are doing carbs to keep you warm in the winter uh, because, you know... It's cold outside. Because it, it's cold outside. It's, it's really cold freaking outside. cold. And, uh, you know, we, there's just, uh, there's just time, times when celery won't do it. There's times when, uh, when you know... <laughs> as much as I love salad, much as I love there a good, are times when you need much something, as, you know, something else. When, and, when it, and when Jenny's saying, no, I don't think a salad is right <laughs> right now, then you know. That it's uh, that something is amiss. So uh, so I'm looking at your pierogies. Okay, so I've taken um, this is a round of dough that I've um, made a little bit before, and I've just dusted it very lightly with flour, and I'm just going to roll it out. And like I said, this dough is so nice. I think it's so nice. It's yeah, so, it's, it's I mean that's rolling out easy and it's rolling out it thin, not giving really you a whole lot nice. of trouble. Yeah. Let me use this water so I don't spill it. You can be a little bit violent with it. Yeah, because it's, you know. And remember when you're rolling things out, you want to roll it in different directions. You want to roll it, you yeah. know, you can roll it this way and then, uh, uh, and then, you And know, I'm kind you of can rolling kind of like it up from the center out center to the out. edges. And Jennifer's got a tray of those cookies I see, to go I'm seeing into cookies the oven. go into the lower oven. I'm looking forward to the cookies. So this is about um, thin enough and then I've just got, um, I'm going to just sprinkle it with a little bit of flour so that it won't stick. And then I'm just going to um, cut these out. And I sometimes take the edges or the, the inner pieces and I roll them out. They tend to be a little heavier and doughier, but we've pointed out that I like heavy and doughy, so I don't care, really. Well, on behalf of the heavy and doughy, I'll say. I'll finish these in a minute. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking... Um, one of my little rounds and I'm holding it in my hand like this and I'm just scooping in some and it's real easy to get too much filling I tend to get too much filling a lot and then I'm taking just a little bit of water on my finger and I'm just going around the edge to help it seal and this one is a little misshapen so let's do this and then I'm just sort of tucking it down and pulling it up and pinching and sort of tucking the filling in as I go really making sure that I'm sealing that edge good. And that's how that works. So again, this is just uh, mushrooms. I wish I was doing some reading and I wish um, our, our wonderful farmer's market manager for the Perry County Farmer's Market, Kirsten Webb, is growing lion's mane mushrooms. Um, I grow mushrooms in my basement, but it's by accident. And I don't think that we can use them to cook with, but I would Terrible love idea, to yeah. find, and, and our friends, Michelle Gamble and, and Mike, Michelle and Mike Gamble forage mushrooms. Nice. And I really, that's the skill I most want to learn, the wildcraft skill I'm most interested in learning because these are traditionally made, um, I think on Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve, I can't remember, with different wild mushrooms, with a, just a variety of different mushrooms. And I love mushrooms. So um, I would really like to try that. And then I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll do a few of the other kind too. Once I get these done, once I have them all ready to go, I'm going to drop them into boiling water just until they float and then just let them go for a few minutes past that. And then I'm going to saute them in some um, butter. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I put a few breadcrumbs with that. Sometimes I'll do some sliced onion um, to serve on top of it. And then they're traditionally served with sour cream. So mm -hmm. absolutely delicious. 
That is absolutely good. beautiful. I've, I've built another one of these just, uh, you know, because, again, i got these small ones, so I like to build multiple of those because I like the edge pieces of the pizza. I think, you know, Tam and I both do. Uh, when I make pizzas at home, so it's better to make uh, multiple smaller pizzas Lots than one bigger edges. one because yeah, there's more sense. edge. So these are going in here, sense. and I'm looking at that other one, and I'm already seeing the edges of those potatoes start to crisp up, um, and that's what you're going to get. You're going to get kind of some browning and crisping on the edges of the potatoes, but because we soak those in water overnight, they're not going to overcook and burn before the, that's the crust. That's a really good tip. Before I, the crust gets uh, gets done. Yeah. So you're making, so this is, this is a dumpling, really. This it is really a, is. Uh, yep. you know, this is uh, one of those things that just about every culture in the world has uh, And has I saw when I was looking at different recipes, I saw one that was for little, small mm. um, mushroom pierogi, and they were sort of shaped more sort of like tortellini almost, mm. like they wrapped around, and they were served in a borscht, and they looked nice. amazing. So I, I love beets, so I can't wait to try that for sure. Okay, and I'm just going to shift over and use, I, I, the potato and cheese ones are the most um, common ones, but I, I love sauerkraut. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make some that are sauerkraut next. So Jonathan, you know what the ultimate carb is? What is the ultimate carb? Alcohol, really. Yeah, if we're looking for something to keep us warm, then that's definitely, that's the, uh, that's definitely the thing. I did dry January. Um, just as a sort of little reset for myself, and I um, really enjoyed it. And I enjoyed, I want to thank the lovely and beautiful Melissa Bond, who sent me some tips for um, enjoying, because you know, a lot of times it's just, it's kind of the ritual of having something in a pretty glass. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's not even about the alcohol, it's just about sort of slowing down and saying, this is the time of the day when I'm doing something special for myself, when I'm stopping, it's not time to work anymore. Um, and it, it's really nice whether it has alcohol or not in it, yeah. but I will say that what you're making is particularly nice because of the alcohol. If it's going to have alcohol in it, you know, then, then that's fine too. Um, so what I am, uh, what I'm going to, we, we talked about this and we decided what are the, you know, what's the most carby, what's the most uh, caloric. I Googled, uh, I Googled version. what's the cocktail with the most carbs and they were yeah. like, if you don't want carbs, I was like, no, 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 I, no. I do want carbs. Yeah, I, I did that too. I tried to, I tried to, to uh, Google high carb recipes when I was thinking about this the show, and uh, that's kind of hard to find. Oddly it really not. is. So, uh, but what I decided is that you need something that has, um, if you really want to, uh, to you know, uh, go go high calorie, you want to go with something that is both sweet and creamy. Um, so uh, we're going to get our friend heavy cream involved. And what I'm and the the first cocktails that I thought of were things like the White Russian. Um, but I, I wanted to try one called the Brandy Alexander. This is an old cocktail. Um, it's actually an old group of cocktails. Um, that there, there's a whole group of cocktails called Alexanders, and and uh, you know you could make it with just about anything. You could make a gin Alexander, a bourbon Alexander, um, but brandy is the one you see the most um, anymore. Um, so I'm starting with some brandy, and this is from our friends Copper and Kings in Louisville. Um, so if you ever get a chance to visit them, it's a wonderful uh, a wonderful spot. They make a whole lot of delicious brandy. And uh, we've had. What some else do they? Are they a bourbon distillery? No, they are. They are. They primarily do brandy. They really? do a few other things, but. And uh, where is it in Louisville? It's in Louisville. It's in uh, uh, Butchertown, I believe, is is technically where that is. But it's. Uh, um, we've had some crazy afternoons there. Um, I'm going to start with two ounces of this. This is just their straight up American brandy. I'm going to do two ounces of that. This is an equal parts cocktail, so that works. Now, uh, for a Brandy Alexander, traditionally, you're going to have uh, creme de cacao, which is a, a chocolate liqueur, basically. Um, I got home this afternoon and realized I don't have any creme de cacao, at least none that I could find. So, uh, so what I'm using is something called uh, Liqueur Quarenta y Trace, or uh, Liquor 43. This is Spanish, um, and it's sort of vanilla-based, but it's got a lot of different flavors in there. It smells so good. Yeah, but it's definitely a winter sort of, uh, sort of thing. What's and it traditionally used for? Just um, a lot of things like this. I mean, it, sometimes you can just you just drink it straight, or you it can. It smells uh, really good. Uh, but a, a lot of sweet sort of liqueur uh, things like this, and just to punch up the chocolate, when we were try taste testing this, I am going to add just a dusting of Hershey's cocoa to uh, to our Spanished up. Uh, we were calling this the Brandy Alejandro. So I'm going to add a little, a little uh, Hershey's cocoa to it. And then, of course, our, uh, our heavy hitter 
is So, now, pedigree. Jonathan, I know that you've taught us that anything with citrus should be shaken. Is that also true of anything with cream? I think it's true with things with cream, yes, because you uh, you tend to... Because it aerates you, it? You aerate it, you lighten it just a touch. I think that that's, that's usually good. Um, so, to me, uh, especially this drink in particular, I think that this is I'll, a... Uh, I'll turn it up when I uh, that This one is best when you do shake it. So, I've got all that in my... Mm -hmm. And I've got my glasses ready to go. And this is served in a cocktail glass. So these guys. And I'm going to add some ice to my shaker. I love milk punches and milk-based cocktails, especially yeah. in the winter. Yeah, this is a, uh, and, and I love it when they're lightened up just a little. Um, and, and this is another New Orleans thing. I mean, the brandy, the, the brandy milk punch or the uh, uh, gin fizz punch are very common down there. So I'm just going to shake this well. Over the shoulder. Over the shoulder. All right. And then, so it looks a little like chocolate milk. The best chocolate milk that is you've beautiful. ever had. I did when I, when I was doing, uh, when I was Googling for this, there was a, a cocktail that just added a shot of brandy to, uh, to a carton of chocolate milk. They actually just got the, uh, <laughs> The school-sized cartons of chocolate I milk. I love that. That would be uh, a really fun, like, camping thing. Yep. Or, I'm going to remember that. So, well, I over-poured my first one, so. That's okay. That's all right. Uh, now, I'm going to finish this with a little bit of nutmeg. Uh, now, we've, we've talked before about nutmeg and how you need to buy it like this, buy it in the whole nutmegs, because uh, nutmeg that you buy pre-ground tastes like nothing within about a month. Uh, it just doesn't last. It has no shelf life. What does? N nutmeg. Has no in, shelf life? Uh, if it's pre-ground. Oh, does. I was going to say, really? Because I've kept my little... No, these, what did you say? These, you taught me those are not called megs. They're called these are called, No, they are called megs. These they are, are these are, they're, okay. they're not nuts, which always surprises me that they ought, they ought to be nuts. But, uh, uh, but just use this in a, just a microplane grater, and that gives us a nice, Look gorgeous... pretty. That is absolutely beautiful. Gorgeous. Is that it? Brandy Alejandro. Chin Chin. Mm. Mm. Yeah, because it's creamy, but it's boozy. It's still boozy, it's so perfect. it just kind of hits you. Mm. I mean, this is definitely something you can enjoy on a, on a winter, uh, mm -hmm. winter's night. Be really good by the fire. On the couch, in under the a blanket. In the hot tub. Yep. That's yep. delicious. Definitely one to, uh, uh, one to watch. So you're getting some more pierogies out I'm there. I'm getting some more pierogies out. And while I make those, Jennifer's going to talk about the way that she ices and glazes her cookies. And... I just want to say that these cookies are delicious. I love lemon flavor, and I especially love them in the winter because they're so um, summery and so bright. I love lemon in pasta. We've been doing, my daughter and I have been doing pasta lately, um, and just really um, cooking pasta, and then sauteing um, sometimes like a little onion, mm -hmm. um, sometimes some, maybe some greens, and then grating the zest of an entire lemon over it and squeezing the juice in, and then just um, some Parmesan cheese uh, that we grate or some some Romano cheese, and then we just put the pasta in it, save a little bit of the pasta, wa pasta water to make mm. it. And it's so good and so lemony and so delightful. So Jennifer, what kind of icing? How are you icing these? So my favorite, the icing that I have for this is really a sweet tart icing. I take some powdered sugar and I mix in some lemon zest and some lemon juice and whip it up, and it creates a really nice sweet tart flavor. Um, that also adds a little moistness to the cookie um, and I think helps you not even realize that the cookies are gluten-free. I, I wouldn't know. Yeah. We had a meeting the other day and Jennifer brought some of these and I ate. She was like, you all can take some home if there are any left, but I ate all of them <laughs> during no, the meeting. There were none left. Yeah, well, they're a good cookie. They're so, really good. Um, we're going to get some frosted and we'll bring them out and uh, y'all can eat some. Okay, Great. that sounds good. Frost them up. So I'm going to do to um, just a couple of these potato ones, and then I'll go ahead and I'll um, start cooking them. I'll start cooking them. And you want your water boiling over there? I, I'm ready to turn it up to boil, if you okay, don't mind. I just did. Thank you. I don't usually peel potatoes because I think that peeling potatoes is for, I always say, 1920s servicemen. <laughs> Um, and I just don't do it. But if you want to peel your potatoes, you certainly can. And really, pierogies are so forgiving, and mm. they're so versatile. I mean, you can really put anything in them. I've seen a lot of recipes that have bacon, but I, I don't really ever feel like I need meat in my pierogies. I like them. 
I do like to serve them with something on the side, like usually I'll do cabbage, I'll saute mm. some cabbage maybe with some bratwurst or some other sausages, um, anything that's kind of, kind of uh, Germany, Germanic. And I, I really love that. And I'm just making sure that I'm pinching these all closed really well. You want well. them to be closed up nicely. Yeah, they'll sometimes explode. So I think it's about time for another commercial, so we'll, uh, we'll do that. Um, so you're watching What's Cooking Now from the Heinemann Settlement School, uh, where food is love and love is delicious. We'll be right back. The Red Spotted Newt is a locally owned independent bookstore located in downtown Hazard, Kentucky, specializing in Appalachian literature from authors such as Silas House, Gurney Norman, and Annette Clapsaddle, among many others. The Newt also offers a full collection of art and gifts, including little bubby child prints and these sweet cards inspired by The Office. Check out their store located at 221 Memorial Drive in Hazard or shop online through bookshop.org. And be sure to follow them on Facebook and Instagram at the handle Red Spotted Newt. Join the Pick and Bow family at Heinemann Settlement School. For the past five years, our Pick and Bow Mountain Music Education Program has provided free music lessons to students interested in learning how to play acoustic instruments. Any 4th through 12th grade students residing in Knott or Floyd County are invited to participate. Students have the option to learn guitar, fiddle, mandolin, banjo, mountain dulcimer, or ukulele. These virtual lessons take place on Zoom. If you have a device with a webcam and an internet connection, you're all set. A limited number of loaner instruments are available from the Heinemann Settlement School. Go to heinemann.org slash calendar to register. See you soon. And we're back on what's cooking now. And uh, I think it's about time to pull this sucker out of here. Ooh, I can't wait. Now, I can tell you how long to cook this, but really the answer is until it's done. It, you know, depending on your oven, it could be anywhere that from so nothing good. to, you know, any time. But look at that right there. Look at that. That looks amazing. Look at that. Amazing. See, those potatoes get nice and crispy on the edges. That and, looks uh, so good. And the rest of that looks good. It's a little, got it a little bit dark on one side, but hey, That's we'll live. Carbon so makes that is it tasty. A, so that so look at that. I'm going to put this over here to cool just a little bit before I cut those so, up. So, you know, for a while... Um, the pantry shelf in Hazard was selling pizzas with Grippo's chips on them, and that's just amazing. But this is like an upscale potato chip pizza. Yeah, I mean that, that's not the uh, that's not the worst idea. And actually, if you wanted to throw a little Grippo seasoning on this, Ooh. I wouldn't be angry about it personally. No, so, I don't think I would either. Don't think I would. So you've got some uh, you you've got your I've got some pierogies, pierogies and they're ready to to go. So I'm going to take them. I've got some salted boiling water um, over on the stove, Hope and then boiling. I also have a pan that's filled with. Um, that has a little butter in it because I'm just going to saute these off when I'm done. And I don't know which ones are which, but we'll find out, I guess, when we cook it. So I've got, I'm just going to just turn this on. It's not too high. And I've got a, um, a, spider. a spider there to pull out. And I'm just going to sort of drop these in one by one. And they'll sink down to the bottom. But then, shortly, they'll float to the top. And then I don't want to put too many in there. And I'm just going to kind of give them a little nudge to make sure they're not sticking on the bottom. And we'll let those go until they start to float to the top. And then I've just got some butter here um, in my pan ready to saute or to just sort of really some people like them different ways, and you can do it however you like. Some people like them to get a little crispy. I like them just to sort of get in the butter and get maybe a little brown on them. A lot of times it's really delicious, too. My mother-in-law taught me to take breadcrumbs, pretty fine breadcrumbs, and sprinkle those on, too, and then those kind of brown in the butter and give it a little crunch. And they're often served with um, thinly sliced white potatoes that have been sautéed and that are then sort of um, a little bit... Um, almost not really crunchy but definitely brown so again I'm just kind of waiting for these to float to the top and once they float to the top I'll give them just a couple more minutes and then they'll be done all right I've got a in the meantime I've got a pizza out over here so uh, so here's one of my uh, one of my pizzas it's been un, uh, un unpanned and I'm unpanned is that unpanned. what you just said so I'm just gonna cut this We'll do six pieces on this. 
I've moved it out to the cutting board. It's always easier to move it out to a cutting board and then cut it there. Um, just using a regular old pizza wheel. All right. That so looks I'm just gonna move beautiful. This to a plate. I call bibs on the perfectly done piece, which is the more brown one. I'm gonna do that. And I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, hit this with just a touch more olive oil. Look at that. That just is to beautiful. That is shimmy a thing that of beauty. Up. Shimmy that up a touch to make it pretty. And there we are. Mm. I'm gonna check my pierogi and then I'm gonna taste that. Again, very simple thing, especially if you think, uh, you know, beforehand to do your, uh, uh, to get your, and these uh, will get your pizza dough. right to the top when they're done. And All right, I want to, I want this piece. Mm. Mm. That's perfect. And mm. you get that butteriness from the golden potatoes, you get, you know. I really like the little hit of rosemary. Mm -hmm. And I like the little crisp at the edge. Mm -hmm. And because you know we've we've not skimmed on the olive oil, you get a lot of mm -hmm. a lot of that flavor. That's so good. Mm. Mm. That's doing the job. All right, how those pierogies looking? They're not floating yet. But you can see they're kind of getting a little done. Thank goodness, so far none of them are exploding. I think I see one that's a little open at one end, but they're holding together pretty well. Usually you're gonna have a few sacrificial pierogies. I even like the sacrificial ones. And I usually like to let my butter get just a little bit browned because I mm. think it has a lot more toasty flavor that way. I feel like these are done, but not floating. We'll give them a couple more minutes. And I did salt my water pretty heavily because mm. that lends a lot of good flavor to them. It does. How are those cookies coming back there? Oh, uh, we've got some. Are you ready? Let's yeah, go. we are. Yeah, we're not sharing them. They're too good. So I'm starting to get some Mo floaters. Most so of while them we mm. met an unfortunate I'm accident. Out. Look at that. Yeah. I'm just going to toss them in here. So let's see so. what the cookies are doing and then we'll come back. To the pierogi. Here are the finished cookies. Um, one of the things I really love about this is that there's a whole lot of lemon zest and you can see the lemon zest mm -hmm. in the frosting. And so I think it just makes a really delicious cookie and um, I, I think, think you should try one. I think these are going to pair really nicely with that cocktail. I'm going to have that one right there. Perfect. I'm curious how these have turned mm. out as well. Like, it's so carby, but it's so bright at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know, because you got that, that nice heaviness and nice carbs within the, the lemon. It makes it really light. I mean, it cuts through the, the fat that's in the cookies. And it also just just uh, sort of reminds you that, that maybe there's a brighter day coming. Maybe the, the spring is on its way. Absolutely. Absolutely. And would you, do you miss the wheat flour in these? Would not have even thought about it. Yeah. I mean, this is one I would never even... Uh, it certainly never occurred to me to complain about it. And if you asked me to, uh, if you asked me about it, I would say, yeah, there's, there's definitely, there's nothing missing from that cookie. Okay. I don't yeah. think I would know that those are gluten-free if I weren't told. No, I would not. Yeah, actually, um, I took a bunch of these to family dinners and put them on cookie trays this Christmas, and no one knew at all. So, there you I go. I want to like taste to try a piece one. Of, uh, oh, absolutely. This looks amazing. Are we ready to test taste the pierogi? Absolutely. Mmm. Okay. Jonathan, this so is it's, outstanding. It's really just, uh, it's just better than you expect it's going to be. That's mm -hmm. the thing. You think just potatoes on pizza, that's not going to be that good. And here mm -hmm. we are. Hold on, hold on. Let me get, let me get a spoon and a little dish for the sour cream. Those cookies look amazing. Mm. Yeah, that cookie's fantastic. And these pierogies look great. I mean, they've not really put a lot of browning on them. I mean, you, it's going to be hard to because they're, they're wet. Because they're wet when they go in the mm -hmm. in the skillet. But uh, but they have been 
but they've been hit and gotten a little flavor. Mm -hmm. They look gorgeous. And I love sour cream. It's a gift from the gods. It really is. Mm -hmm. All right, so I don't know which ones are which. And you can get a fork if you want. Mystery pierogi. Or you can just sort of pick it up with your fingers. It's probably not too hot. I'm going to indulge in a cookie. Mm, oh, mm. Yeah. These are so good. They're just perfect. Mm. Yeah, I your butter up. Well, thank you. Mm. So which ones do you have? Mm. There's potato. There's sauerkraut, sauerkraut, and there's mushrooms. Mm. Mm. That's that, yeah, I mean, that's a, mm, the sauerkraut's that, amazing. Yeah, the sauerkraut is great. It's just got that big, uh, that little bit of sourness mm -hmm. at the bottom, and then. Yeah. Well, the sauerkraut filling, I sauteed some onions, grated some carrot into it, used the sauerkraut, and then I hit it with a little caraway seed, which I didn't see in a recipe, but I thought it would be good. And the mm -hmm. reason I think of the place in Cincinnati is because. This is the food that I want late at night, you know. Yeah. This is, a, and that, that's definitely when the pierogi window, uh, get, the babushka gets its, uh, uh, does its service. Let's see which one I have. Mm. So we've only had the sour cream, the sauerkraut. None of us have had the other one. No, I've hmm. had the mushroom one. It was amazing. I have a potato one. And she doesn't like mushrooms. No, you I don't? Mushrooms. Really? Yeah. And yet it works. I love them. I really want Mike and Michelle Gamble to teach me how to find mushrooms. Mm -hmm. When they were explaining to me that you can find, I think is it is it uh, Hen of the Woods at the mm -hmm. base of oak trees. Mm -hmm. So once I was hiking up on the Pine Mountain Trail up towards the um, the end up there next to the gas station up on top of Pine Mountain, and I went off trail and looked at the base of every oak tree I could find. Not <laughs> a single damn mushroom. <laughs> I was there on that same trip with them once, and they were like, "Look, there's this and this and this." They found like six different kinds. <laughs> I've also found exactly one morel in my life, and that was growing in the middle of a road in a protected area that I couldn't pick. Mmm. Yeah, these are outstanding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do have one more thing. Do we have time? Sure. I get Tamara, minutes. would you mind dipping those out and just tossing them in the butter? So I know that it's a carb show, but I'm me, and so I had to make a little salad. Of course. So our beautiful dear friend, Pam Farrell, mm -hmm. whom I love very much. I believe was watching. Who I hope she's watching. When I um, posted about pierogies and about how I wanted to have a milk bar socialist canteen, she said, oh yeah, um, I used to live um, in, in Philly and I used to go and get pierogies at this place and I used to have this bratwurst salad. And I said, what? 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 Bratwurst salad? What? what? And so I Googled some recipes and I asked her, was it this, was it this? And she said, yeah, it was kind of like that. So I've made us a bratwurst salad. Let me grab it. And you're just now telling us about this? Well, it was hidden. It's, I told you it was a meat surprise. Now, I've never had this served to me, so I don't know if I made it right or not. Pam's going to have to tell me. But um, traditionally, it's served just like this. So bratwurst. And I also don't think the bratwurst is browned first, but mm. I thought it would taste better. And it's sliced to dill pickles, um, red onion, and then some dill. And the dressing is just pickle, a little pickle juice, a little vinegar, a little oil, salt and pepper, and I toss a little more dill in and some chives. Um, and because I'm me, I'm serving it over something green. I have these beautiful turnip greens, which are a little bitter and a little, I think, delicious, and I think really set off nice things. I set off nicely things like pierogies that are rich mm -hmm. and bratwurst. And so I've dressed these just very lightly in that same dressing, mm -hmm. a little pickle juice. And can I just, can we talk about pickle juice for a minute? Like it's awesome. I like mm -hmm. to brine chicken in it. I can't remember where I read this now, but I certainly didn't make it up. But I saw something on the internet, your favorite two uh, ingredient dressing. And I was like, what would that be? And it's sour cream with a little pickle, pickle juice, juice whisked into it. And I've just really been loving that mm -hmm. in a lot of things. So um, that's what this is. And I'm just gonna, I don't want too much of the dressing. So I'm just gonna kind of scoop it on here. This is the most Midwestern salad I've ever right? seen. Right, or the most German. Since yeah, there's no Snickers. Well, ooh, I could. No cool whip. No. I, of course, you know, Jonathan, how I feel about gel things mm. and aspics. I'm going to have to think about a way to aspic this yeah, up. Yeah, you are going to have to aspic that. So that's this. And I, let me serve you a little bit. And let you get can, some forks. I'll grab some forks. You dish, I'll grab forks. Okay. 
And like I said, I mean, I'm all about the carbs, believe me, especially this time of the year when it's cold outside. But it's nice to have something that's a little acidic, that's a little um, tart to rest your mouth on, whether that's a delicious lemon cookie or a salad like this. Here, just go ahead and use this fork and I'll get some more, Jonathan. You got some? Yep. So I'm going to taste this. Pam Farrell, does this look like? Can we get a close-up of this for Pam? Does this, except for the mustard or the turnip greens, which I know are not traditional. And the fact that I have browned the sausage, I hope that this is what this looks like. Because I'm going to make you some, Pam, and bring it to you. Mm. Oh, that's good. That's a keeper. Mmm. Mm. I like yeah, it. Yes, that's correct. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm, that was pretty good. Yeah, I can do that. And I like the turnip greens with it, the bitter. I like bitter greens, especially with things like this. You yeah, know, with... I think it works. Mm -hmm. That works. Mm. We hope you've enjoyed our mm. uh, our little foray into carb land tonight. Um, I feel warmer already. I do feel warmer. And we want to thank uh, want to thank the folks at the Red Spotted Newt. I want to thank the uh, first the folks at the Heimdall Settlement School, the Kentucky Humanities Council, for their uh, um, their their support. You know, think. the Hyman Settlement School does so many wonderful things. They really they let do. let us do this. They let us teach people about good foods and local foods. Their Pick and Bow program, which is accepting applications now, is that is the most amazing program. It is great. That gives kids in Knott County the chance to learn to play traditional Appalachian music and to play an instrument. And they don't have to have anything. They have instrument loan outs. There's no tuition. It's, it's, it's just a great thing. It warms the cockles of my heart nearly as much as these pierogies and cookies and pizza warm my body. So until next time... Join us for What's Cooking Now next time. And until next time, feed the ones you love and love the ones you feed because this is What's Cooking Now, where food is love. And love is delicious. See you next time. Stay warm. What's Cooking Now is a production of Hyman Settlement School with funding provided by the Kentucky Humanities Council. Hyman Settlement School is committed to cultivating and growing the local food system and the unique culinary and agricultural traditions of Central Appalachia through our food waste programs. For more information on our work, visit us at www.hyman.org and be sure to tune in to What's Cooking Now on the first Thursday of each month to see what's cooking.